What is up guys? Today we're back with another BIOS video and today we're checking out the BIOS here on the Gigabyte Z590 Aorus Master. Now this BIOS should be pretty much the same across all of the Z590 Aorus motherboards. Obviously, depending on the motherboard that you have, some of the settings will or won't be there. Um, but overall, the layout should be pretty much the same. Now, if you wanna know how to get into this BIOS, when you power on your system, just keep on hitting that delete button on your keyboard and you'll be brought here right into the BIOS. Now, this video is just an overview. We're gonna go over the different settings. We're not gonna go into detail on a lot of things. Um, this is just to give you an idea of the settings and maybe help you find where some of the settings are. Now, when you first load into the BIOS, you should be brought into easy mode, which is what you see right in front of you. In easy mode has all the settings that you really want if you're like a first time builder or you're first turning on your system, you need, you need to enable or set some things up. So we have our information up here, um, live view of our CPU frequency, memory frequency, temperatures and voltages. Over here we have our DRAM stats and we can enable or disable your XMP profile. So by default, it should be disabled like that. To enable your XMP profile, you just click this button right here. It's that simple. Below that, we have our boot sequence. Now for us, we only have one drive installed, but if you had multiple drives, you could drag and drop to set your boot sequence. Over here is a live view of what is installed in your system. So under SATA, we have our drive here, PCI Express, we can see we have our graphics card, and then it's running at X16 speeds, M.2, no M.2 drives installed, but if we had one installed, it would show up right here. Uh, under here we have smart fan 6 this will give you a live view of all of the fans that you have connected to your motherboard and their speeds now we can actually click in and under smart fan 6 this is the actual smart fan 6 application and here we can fully tune all of the headers on the board we can set up you know cpu fail warnings temperature warnings things like that the different speeds like you can set your speed control um, to you know silent manual full speed you can set up custom curves for all of the headers you can do all of that and the cool thing that you can do is once you have your system fully built you can click on tune all and it's going to fine tune all of the fans for the best performance to noise ratio inside your system which is really good and i highly recommend you do that once you have your system fully configured we can hit escape to get out of there. And then we just have Intel rapid storage technology. You can turn that on or off. We can change our language. We can always uh, click this button or, or hit F1 for help. Brings up a little help menu there. Um, advanced mode, you can always toggle between normal mode and easy mode and advanced mode just by hitting F2 back and forth very easy. Smart fan six, we, which we were just into load optimized defaults so this is always something good to fall back on if you mess up a setting or you change the setting and you're not sure where it is again or something like that you can always just hit f7 to load the optimized defaults q flash is uh f8 we can go into q flash and this allows you to easily flash your bios and i would highly recommend if you are getting a z590 motherboard make sure you update the bios because a lot of the new features especially for the i9 is only enabled in the latest BIOS. So make sure you get the latest BIOS. This allows you to easily update your BIOS from a USB flash drive and save your BIOS to a USB flash drive. So you can do that through this, save and exit, and then our favorites menu. So let's go back into advanced mode. Advanced mode is where you can obviously fine tune everything. First, we have our CPU settings. Now, very quick, easy overclocking, like not really difficult overclocking. We would go here, and set our CPU clock ratio to something obviously different than 35. Um, so we could set this to say 50. Uh, let's go down here and select 50. And we're going here. And we'll set this to 50 here. And then our CPU would be running at five gigahertz instead of 4.8. Um, when we restart a system. That's simple, easy overclocking. 
um, doesn't get much easier than that. Um, we have more of our CPU settings. We can go into advanced CPU settings. Um, and there's a lot of different things you can change in here. This is everything to do with your CPU you will find within this menu. Now, the one thing you might want to do is you can switch your active turbo ratios. Um, you, you set it from auto to manual, and then you can set um, the, the turbo ratios for each of the cores of your processor. This is another way to overclock. You could set the first two to 53 or 5.3 what they're at and then you can maybe set the rest to all to 5.1 um, You can overclock that way pretty easily as well now the The really annoying thing about the gigabyte bios is if you go into all these settings and then say I want to go back because we have a page before typically I'm Okay, before when I was doing this bios it if I went into advanced settings and then hit escape it would ask me to save. So it's not doing it now, um, so that's good. Um, so going back into our CPU settings, we have our active turbo ratios, which we just went through, per core hyper threading uh, disable. So if we set that to manual, we can disable hyper threading per core. Um, C states control, again, you can enable or disable that, um, and you can set your different C states for your processor turbo power limits same thing um you can set up your your power limits and and all that stuff if you're doing some intense overclocking or different things you can do that uh turbo per core limit control again um you can set it to manual and you can set all of those for your core so it's, you can do a lot of stuff with your cpu here it's you know, like i said pretty easy to go through we'll hit escape to go back now that that works um here's our memory settings so XMP, again, if you want to enable or disable, if you're not going to do it in easy mode, you just hit it. It will show the profiles that your memory has, one profile. Um, so we'll go back to disable, profile, boom, and we set that. Memory multiplier, if you want to overclock beyond your XMP profile, you can do that. Advanced memory settings, um, you, can, you have all of your different settings for your memory. You can see your SPD info. Um, let's go to one that's populated here. You can see all the info for your memory and then you can go into the advanced timings you can set even more advanced timings if you want or view your advanced timings you can see all of that here voltages so this is all your voltages if you are overclocking i would suggest changing your cpu uh, voltage and you would probably start on this processor at 1.3 volts let's go to 1.3 and kind of go from there um you can also if you're overclocking your memory you can set your dram voltage again change it from auto to whatever you want so these are all of your voltages everything to do with voltages is here advanced advanced voltage settings um you can change a lot of that stuff and then cpu vrm settings you can change your load line calibration and the graph that you see below shows your um your load line scaling so you can change this um again you have like auto normal you know low medium high turbo so if you're doing crazy uh stuff you can do ultra extreme but for the, for the most part like i said set it to auto by default you really won't need to change it unless you're doing some pretty intense overclocking so that is everything in the tweaker menu it has everything that you want for overclocking and changing settings you know, whether it's CPU or memory or voltages, it's all right there. In the settings menu, um, we can go to, you know, platform power and do things, you know, different uh, save modes, resume, you know, wake on different times and, and things like that. Everything to do with power. IO ports, we can turn different ports on or off. Um, App Center download and in install configuration it is enabled so basically when you turn your system on or boot up for the first time in windows it's going to ask to download the app center which i would highly recommend because that allows you to easily you know download all your drivers download all your companion software all within one app which i really like usb configuration again you can turn off you know legacy usb support all of the stuff for usb is right in here network stack configuration NVMe configuration again, we don't have a device, but if we did all the settings would be right in here SATA and RST configuration 
you can see all of the SATA ports to enable or disable them. It will show um, the drive that you have installed in the port as well if you do have one installed, but everything for SATA configuration stuff is all right in here. Miscellaneous, um, you know, LEDs on and system power on state, obviously. LEDs in, in sleep, hibernation, and soft off states. So if you want the LEDs on the board to remain on when you have the, your system powered off, you can do that. Um, you know, all the different, different things like that. You have uh, trusted computing. If you had a TPM module installed, um, it's a gives you a live view of all of your voltages and lets you know uh, that if you have your case open, um, if you have that set up as well. So you have all that in there. And then under system info, this gives us, you know, the, the motherboard that we're using, the BIOS version, the BIOS date, all of that stuff, the, um, you know, the processor that we're running, everything like that, plug-in devices info. Um, again, it's the same thing that we, we showed on the easy mode. It's just kind of in this uh, set right here. And then QFlash, again, same thing. We can easily access QFlash. Under boots, you can set up like boot logo. You can um, set up your boot option priority. And then under save and exit, um, of course we can save and exit. Load optimized defaults, as I said, is in here as well. Boot override, which I love to see. So you can easily, you know, if you're installing Windows from a flash drive, which I assume most of you are, you can, you know, boot your system the first time, hit the, hit the delete button to get into the BIOS, set your boot override the first time. So all you have to do is just hit enter on this. Um, and then it will boot to that device. So if you had a flash drive, it would show in here and you would boot from your flash drive the first time and then it's gonna you know, do the Windows install. That means on the reboot, you won't have to run and unplug your uh, flash drive. It just makes it so much easier. Save profile and load profile. And that is pretty much it in the BIOS. Now, if you did make any changes, um, when you go to save, so we hit F10 to save, Look at all, it's gonna show you all of the changes too, which I really like. Um, because you're like, oh, what did I change? Do I wanna change this? It's all right here. So it's gonna show you all your changes before you save. You can hit yes to save and no. Um, so that is pretty much it. The BIOS, the Gigabyte BIOS, if we go back to the easy mode, really hasn't changed all that much over the past few years. It's nice, it's simple, it's, it doesn't have really, you know, the there's no mouse lag or anything like that. Everything runs as it should. So if you have any questions about this BIOS, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below, and we'll see you guys in the next video.